Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 94 on Now You Know. Hey, I like your t-shirt. I like your t-shirt. Look at that. That's uh, Starman. Yeah, I like this one because it reminds me of me. Uh, whenever Stargazer. I go outside and it's nighttime, I'm always looking up as if it's not cloudy. Now, if you want to get these t-shirts, you can go over to SFSF where we're doing partnership with them and they have fantastic designs. You can also get these on like mugs and sweatshirts and other cool things. So mm -hmm. go over there and a small portion of your purchase price will go to help us here on the show. So you're helping us out. All right, Jesse. So our first story today, and let me just say before I get into this, you know how a lot of TV, you know, watch those late night talk shows and they're like, we have a great show for you tonight. Mm -hmm. I feel like we have a great show for you today. We do. Yeah, we so, got, it's packed. It's so packed. We had to just pack full cram fill it and then all the all this stuff came out of it and we had to put it in the bonus uh patreon bonus stories. that's right there's a ton of patreon so bonus stories we're just let's get into it because right. we don't have enough time to all right tesla out. goes camping what are we talking about here tesla built a tent and their their new assembly line is out in a tent outside of uh, the fremont factory what they ran out of room uh well uh I don't know if they ran out of room. I can't speak to that, but it, it definitely seems like they needed to build a production line and they chose outside. Well, let's see what Elon said. Needed another general assembly line to reach 5,000 a week. Model 3 production. A new building was impossible, so we built a giant tent in two weeks. Tesla team, KFA. Gah, love them so much. So nice. Mm -hmm. And then another tweet. Elon, I pitched tents way faster. Elon said, they also poured the concrete and built the whole assembly line using scrap we had in warehouses. And it's way better than the other GA line, general assembly line, that cost hundreds of millions. Right. So I, I do want to point out that this isn't like a tent. This is a, a sprung structure, a oh, spring okay. structure. Um, so it's, it's like a tent. It's also like a house. It's like an aircraft hangar, kind of. Gotcha. So they basically... We're like, what's... It's a what, quick building that you can put up. Right. And then lastly, this tweet, will this technique be repeated or is it a temporary solution to get to 5K? Also, is this set up like the new line from Germany? Not sure we actually need a building, said Elon. This tent is pretty sweet. Tesla Groman line is in place at Giga and spooling up now. They super kicked ass too. Heiliger Strossack. What, what, what's that last German it means thing? means like, you know, like, holy crap, holy cow. All right, so you might have missed this. Uh, China stopped taking U.S. and European and foreign plastic waste back in November 2017. They said no more. So between now and 2030, 111 million metric tons of trash will have nowhere to go. Right. The only reason that recycling worked for like the longest time was because China was doing all of the labor. They were doing all of the sorting of the plastic into the different types so that way you can actually use it. So I mean, if you just take like a random plastic item and you're just like, sweet, this is plastic. And you, you know, you toss it into the bin. It's not gonna be the same piece of plastic, you know, type of plastic that, you know, you grab the next thing and you're like, oh, sweet. Ah, here's some plastic and you throw it in the bin. It's not, that's not the same plastic. Right. So you can't. We, we have in, in the US what's called single stream. We mm -hmm. put everything into one barrel, put that at the end of the drive or whatever. They take that away and then it has to be sorted. And it's not easy to sort. First of all, it's expensive. And it's usually not sorted that well. So China has just changed their rules. They basically said that if you send them a bale of plastic, it has to have no more than 0.5% contamination. That means you, it's got to be pretty much just entirely plastic, right. one type of plastic. Mm -hmm. like. PET or HDPE. Now, San Francisco, for instance, they've slowed their recycling so that they can get down to bales that are 0.5% mm -hmm. so that they can ship them to China. Right. So what this actually means is that a lot of your recycling, the stuff that you're throwing in the recycling bin, is just going to be put in landfills. It's right. just trash. It's just like putting it right in the trash. Right. Um, and did you know that 90% of that plastic that you're putting in the recycling bin... 90% of that is just single-use polymers. That means something that's just designed to be used once, and that's it. We're not right. talking about something like, a, you know, that you might use over and over again for a year. Right. 90% is just one-time use. And so the problem here really isn't China. It's not 
that recycling is hard, it's that we're just making so much plastic and we're just throwing it away or recycling it and then throwing it away. It it's, makes you feel good, doesn't it? I mean, it makes you feel good to put it into the recycle bin at work right. or at home like, oh, I just did something good. Guess what, people? You're not doing that much. No. It's not really it's mainly getting recycled. It's just one step. It's just some, you're handing it to someone else, and then they're taking this, and they're, and they're just dumping so, it all into your trash can. So there's two things we'd like you to think about. The first is that we need to switch in this country from single stream recycling to recycling many different things into individual buckets. They do this, for instance, in Germany very, very well. Mm -hmm. You have your your clear glass that goes in one bucket. You have your you know colored glass that goes in another bucket. That way you can actually use it. Mm-hmm. That's the first part. The second part is what, Jesse? You watch the show probably every week, we hope. It's it's nice. You sit down. We have a sort of a heart-to-heart -heart where we talk about all of the, the news of the day. But the rest of the week, we really want you to do something. Whether it's, you know, bring a, a you know reusable water bottle from home into work so that way you're not using a, a single-use uh, water bottle to be thrown away. Buy some reusable grocery bags. Don't use straws. You know, if you... Yeah, buy paper compostable straws right if you, if you need straws or just just drink, drink it out of a cup just drink it out of a cup i mean there are so many different things that if you actually look and evaluate throughout your week and just do this this week right just see what you're doing that is wasteful and, and then comment below and let us know what you did this week right. and, and that might inspire someone else to try it or maybe it came up with a cool idea this week on something you did right because all you have to do is basically just start limiting the number of times you're throwing something in the recycling bin or you know basically the trash can and right. that's going to add up and it's going to make a big difference you know something else we want to leave with you guys mm -hmm. is this video we worked really hard on this the the guys worked really hard on it it's the top five things about the tesla model 3 right. and we condensed it down as much as we could and made it one of those kind of facebook kind of share videos right because obviously you know you can't just take this video that you're watching right now and say, um, okay, Tesla Time News, here you go, friend. Watch this whole thing. They're gonna be like, what? It's like an hour long. I'm not gonna watch that whole thing. But if you give them this, share this with your friends, and then they will probably be able to share it with other people because it's actually watchable. It's not two mad men rambling to you about saving the world. Yeah, put it on your Facebook. All right, we get a lot of people who write to us about nuclear because nuclear is uh, doesn't create any emissions into our atmosphere. And they're like, this is a great way to save the planet mm -hmm. and let's go nuclear. Well, here's a story. It uh, shows you kind of the problems of nuclear. Yes. So um, these highly dangerous plutonium canisters are decaying faster than anticipated at the Sellafield nuclear plant in the UK. Mm -hmm. Now, Government scientists have now agreed to spend an extra billion dollars to make them safe by wrapping them in packaging, said the National Audit Office. And I just want to point out, for that one billion pounds, you could have bought 1.3 gigawatts of solar panels. And installed them. And installed the them. Whole right, cost, the whole right. cost. The whole thing, you could have installed... 1.3 gigawatts of utility. But it doesn't scope. stop there. We did right. a little more digging and we found out that that billion pounds to make them safe, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Drop in the bucket. This one plant is actually going to cost 117 billion pounds to clean up because when they built those canisters, they either didn't know what they were doing or they didn't care what they were doing and right. they left that for some other generation to take care of. Right. So this nuclear plant essentially is going to cost the British taxpayer over a hundred billion pounds. Now for a hundred billion pounds, you could buy 155 gigawatts of solar power or 5% of UK's electricity needs. Whereas this plant, what did it deliver? This plant used to make about 3.8 terawatt hours of electricity per year. All of the UK uses 2,249 terawatt hours. That was in 2014. Okay. So this nuclear plant would have made up about 0.16% of the UK's electricity needs. Wow. However, if you were to build, if you were to take all the money that you're just spending on just cleanup yep. and put that all towards solar, you would generate about 5% of the UK's energy needs. That's 120 terawatt hours a year. Okay? So the the writing is on the wall here. I mean, clearly that this was an older nuclear plant from the 60s, right? But still, today, you could take that $100 billion. You could, let's say you don't want to do solar. You could do what China did, which was plant forests. You could plant two Germany's sized forests. Wow. Two of them. 
for the cost of just cleaning this one plant up. Right. And then here's the thing that gets me. Mm -hmm. They built the plant, they put the waste in containers, and then they were like, that'll be fine. We've done the math. It's going to be safe for decades. And they're wrong. How could they be wrong? It's it's nuclear waste. Why would you why would you cheap out on the barrels or whatever? You know why? Because they didn't care. They right. knew they'd be dead before that problem came up, and they're like, let some other generation worry about it. Right. So, and so now you're worrying about it. Right. This is the problem with humans, I guess. Yeah. Is that if it's not happening in your generation, who cares? Who cares? No more free data for you. Okay. So starting July first, Teslas will no longer come with free data. But that's or, just a week away. Right. So. Basically, this is a kind of a crappy surprise for uh, people getting their cars in the in the coming weeks. Wait, so explain to me what this. So, how much is this going to cost going forward? So, basically, all Teslas now will come with a standard connectivity plan, okay. and that basically just means that it'll it'll cover navigation, um, and that's about it. Wait, so what about web browsing? No. Streaming music? No. Satellite maps? No. Okay, so if I want that, I have to buy the premium plan, and how much right. does that cost? That's going to cost around a hundred dollars a year. Oh, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's a, it's like eight bucks a month. So why why is Tesla doing it now? So July first, they should hopefully have sold their two hundred thousandth car in the United States. Right. If they were paying the bill, the hundred dollar a year bill, that's about two million dollars per year. And that's just for the cars in the United States, which means that that is pretty expensive. And moving forward, as they create more and more and more cars every year, it will add up. The good news is, and it's only good news for some people, if you already have a Tesla, if you bought a Tesla before July 1st, 2018, you're going to have free premium data for life. Or for the lifetime of your car, anyway. Now, this is, I mean, I think that this is always really smart. Tesla is very good at rewarding its earliest customers. They they tend to, you know, maybe they don't get the latest feature, but Tesla makes sure that, you know, their supercharging will last forever um, and stuff like that. So I think that this is, it's something that had to have happened at some point. Now is the right time to do it, I think. So, Jesse, you remember that Audi chief that we talked about last week, how uh, he had his house uh, investigated and searched by the authorities? Yes. Guess what happened to him this week? Um, he Did he win the lottery? Uh, no. No? Okay. Uh, uh, right as we were publishing In Depth last week, Audi chief Rupert Stadler, who had been in charge of Audi for 11 years, was arrested. Oh, the public prosecutor charged him and another Audi board member with fraud and indirect false certification. He's now in custody so that he cannot collude, presumably, with other Audi officials. Oh. Many people in Germany are stunned by this because they thought this would never happen. They thought that he would never lie to people? and No, and... they thought they, the German authorities would never arrest a head of a German car company. So... It has happened. It, it shows you what happens when you when you lie to people. Yeah. Here's a nice thing. Tesla now lets you limit the speed of your car with the new update. Why would I want to limit the speed of my car? I like going fast. Well, um, do, do you want any of my sisters to be driving the car no, fast? No, no, no. So I think that's what this is for. So oh. version 2018.24 or above... Um, and the latest mobile app, version 3.4.1, can now access a new speed limiter feature. Tesla says, limit speed and acceleration with speed limit mode. Max vehicle speed can be set between 50 to 90 miles an hour, which is 80 to 145 kilometers an hour. Wait a minute, so this is speed and acceleration. Yes. So you think they're gonna be able to, you'll be able to lock in chill mode? I think that it would either be chill mode or something very like it. Because that would be great for, you know, Consumer Reports just held back the Model 3 from being a teen recommendation. Mm -hmm. Teen recommendation meaning that it's safe and that it's affordable and that it won't go too fast. They said it was very affordable, it was very safe, but it went too fast. So now if this, you can... This I don't get, first of all. Well, it, you don't it want teens going... too fast. How fast can the Model 3 go? hundred and... No, no, but acceleration. It, it accelerates too oh, fast. Oh, okay. All right. So if you can put it in chill mode... Um, it should become a teen recommended car. I, I think so. And I think, you know, even and it in should be. It's a safe car. Yeah. All right. So check this out, Jesse. This is the first IBM AI debater. This is a computer that's debating a human. In fact, debating Israel's 2016 national debating champion. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, okay, well, it's just plugged in to like some guy in the back who's typing the answers. Mm -hmm. Turns out it's not even plugged into the internet. Wow. This thing is drawing on a database of hundreds of millions of documents, coming up with its own arguments, mm -hmm. and then debating a human. 
And all the people in the audience you see here are actually judging the two. And it came out kind of split. Yeah. Um, a lot of the judges said that the computer wasn't as good as the human at um, voicing their opinion, but they gave more in-depth, more substantive arguments. Interesting. So you mean, at some point, we'll just have an AI write this show. Exactly. <laughs> Won't that be a great day? <laughs> be a great day. <laughs> but no, seriously, you're going to look back on this day in history, I think. This is a very important day because AI is now at that cusp of where it's going to take over and be able to start doing way more. I mean, you know, you say to Siri, like, hey, Siri, what's the weather? But soon you're going to be able to ask your AI, hey, should I go out on a date with this guy? It's going to be able to think deeper about things. I it's going to be able to draw on information and give you information that you couldn't possibly have gotten yourself. I, I don't know if I'd like that, having a really opinionated AI. Siri. <laughs> oh, you're going there again? Gee. I guess it wouldn't be so uh, so passive aggressive, but it might be. You could definitely make one that was passive aggressive. So, so wait, there's more updates there's for the Model more 3? Model 3. Yeah, we had to space them out because otherwise you'd blow your mind. So there's the cabin overheat protection. Okay. Um, there is summon. So you can now summon oh, the model. Summon's on? Summon is now on and Wi-Fi, which means don't get excited. It means that you can connect oh. your, your car to Wi-Fi. Okay. It doesn't have, like, it's not a hotspot. Now remind me about cabin overheat protection. So when active, your vehicle prevents the interior temperature from exceeding 105 Fahrenheit or 40 Celsius for up to 12 hours after you leave your vehicle. Now, is this for in case you left your pet in the car or is this for... Why, what is this for? So this is a safety feature, I believe. Basically, cars can get very, very hot if you leave them in the sun. Even on a 60 degree day, um, in direct sunlight, cars can get well above deadly temperatures. So 105, um, we, we've done some research. 105 means that you will survive for the most part. Um, like y your body won't shut down just because of how hot it is. You might sweat to death, but your your internal organs won't shut down, like especially right. for children. This right. is so, mostly just for children. Because children at about 107 degrees, they actually die. They die. Why aren't we letting the user turn it to a different temperature? I think that they are actually going to be coming out in a later update where you can actually adjust what temperature you oh. like. I think that 105 is good because it's, it's survivable, right, for the most part. Okay. It, it means that, you know, no one, no one hopefully will die and it will, um, you won't come out and your car will be dead. Oh, I see. Because if it was like keeping it at 70, maybe it's using way too much energy from the Right. Battery. It'd be like having the AC on for some period of time. Gotcha. I think also if you lived somewhere where it's very hot, um, that just means that when you get in the car, it's not you know 200 degrees and you're oh, not good just point. You don't scald yourself. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it keeps the interior of the car at a nicer uh, temperature just to make sure that all the everything in there doesn't degrade. Gotcha. VW is going to invest $100 million in QuantumScape, which is a Stanford-based San Jose, California startup that started in 2012, and they are making solid-state batteries. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get a solid-state battery into production by 2025. So, okay, so the $100 million, I think, is just to get this company... Not started, but to get keep the ball developing. Well, and also it, it makes rolling. VW their largest shareholder, so basically it'll become their company. Right. But to, I'm a little nervous about this 2025 figure. Why? Because I don't think they can quite get there. I think it's going to be something like 2027. Hmm. Why do you think so? I mean, seven years is a long time. Okay. Well, first of all, we have not seen a prototype from them. Maybe they're we have not seen secret. like a prototype car because I want to see a prototype car but this is just battery we're talking about i mean they say that the e-golf with the solid state battery could go 466 miles versus the 186 miles today right right that's why they're doing that's this. a huge difference but i want to see that oh, i want to see could the car like no 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 i i want to i want to make sure that they can put it in a car and that it works hmm, that they okay. that they have made these batteries because i have not i have no I have no trust You're in skeptical. VW. All right. I have no I don't trust VW. So when they say that they're trying to do something electric, I go, hmm, really? Okay. Fair enough. That's pretty fair, I would say. Alright, it's time for the lightning round. All right, here we go. So Colorado is going to join CARB. Governor John Hickenlooper of Colorado issued an executive order for Colorado to join the CARB states 
emission standard by December 30th, 2018. Now, this is huge because states have power. We keep thinking of the federal government and we keep being dismayed that they're lowering the cafe standards and mm -hmm. stuff. But for instance, Colorado has 1.8 million cars. It's the 22nd in the nation in terms of cars. Right. And if they add themselves to the list of carb states, right. that makes carb even more powerful. Right. So that means that if you are in a state, say one that isn't a carb state, Get in contact with your representative. Say that this is something that you want. Yeah, You say, are a member of the society, and we decided that you should have representative power. So I like it. get your representatives to do what you want. Exactly. Samsung is going to go solar. The Korean-based manufacturing giant Samsung announced last week that it will soon draw 100% of its electricity from renewable energy sources across all of its sites in the United States, Europe, and China. And speaking of solar... Developers have installed 2.5 gigawatts of solar in the first quarter, which is up 13% from a year earlier, according to the Solar Energy Industries Association. And that accounted for, get this, 55% of all new generation. So I'm saying wind, natural gas, coal, solar beat them all wow. in terms of new generation. And why? It's cheaper. It's the cheapest thing out there. And if that weren't enough... right. Bloomberg just came out with this. Their new energy finance released a new report this week that estimates how electricity generation will change out to the year 2050. Now, take a look at this, Jesse. Okay. It looks like uh, wind and solar are going to take a huge portion um, as coal drops off. Now, what's interesting here, though, is I think that they're being way too conservative about coal and natural gas. Right. They, yes, they did drop coal out to 2050, but it still exists, which I don't think will be. No, definitely not. And then they keep... Um, natural gas pretty much where it is right and then they just fill the rest in with wind and solar i think that even though natural gas is cheap and will probably be cheap for a while wind and, and solar keep getting cheaper right and so why would i mean yeah people it's aren't not dumb. right and, and again this this is this whole linear thing right it's going to just woof. Yes. like it's going to happen overnight right because let's face it again the cheapest option generally gets chosen exactly and there are no benefits for a gas system over, say, a renewable system. Tesla has eyes for Germany. Well, Elon said that Germany is the leading choice for its new gigafactory. This is a tweet from Elon. Germany is a leading choice for Europe. Perhaps the German-French border makes sense near the Benelux countries. Uh, Benelux being the uh, Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. Ah, I see. Benelux so, is the short term. I see. Now, I think that this is a really, 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 really smart move. Germany, as we know, is full of car companies. Yep. It's It's Huge the biggest car proportion. company in the world. Yeah, it's a giant portion of their GDP and their all like their whole economy is structured around them. Yeah, as we reported last week, fourteen percent of their economy is those three car companies. Right, and everything else can kind of build off work of that. towards that. Like, oh, I need to build a house for the guy who works for VW. Now, if VW and all the German car companies, which have all been cheating on their emissions, um, get in trouble and you know, get either fined, sued, or forced to, you know, do difficult things. That means that, first of all, there's going to be a huge number of layoffs, which means that there's going to be a lot of well-trained workforce. Secondly, there's going to be a, a huge number of, of Germans who are going to be excited about Tesla because now they're actually working for the company, mm -hmm. um, which means that this is going to sort of take over their economy, not take over, but help their mm -hmm. economy. And... Lastly, if these companies start going out of business or need to close plants, Tesla can buy them up cheap. Oh, because they'll already be in the area. They'll already be in the area. So you have a gigafactory making the batteries. You can just buy another car plant. Except that Elon said that new gigafactories are going to contain the production lines for both the batteries and the cars. So I feel like they're not going to really need a cheap factory anymore. That was the early days. He of also just built a tent. So I mean, he's true. pretty opportunistic. I think That's that true. he's going to go for the, the you know, the well-maintained German lines. All right. It's time for a micro celebration, Jesse. Okay. Why are we micro celebrating? Because microbead bans just went into effect in the UK on June 19th. Wow. So let's talk about why this is important. Just one shower alone with microbeads is thought to send about 100,000 microbeads down the drain and into the ocean, which causes serious harm to marine life. The ban should prevent 
billions of microbeads ending up in the ocean every year. Now, let's just think about this for a second. Imagine you're walking along, okay. and all of a sudden, the, the air around you is just full of microbeads. So you, you're, you have to, you're basically, you'd have to breathe them. You can stop. <laughs> you would have to be breathing them all in. It would, bas- it would kill you. Right. Because your body oh, so is not. I, you're like if I'm a fish. Right, because you're a fish. Right. Microbeads are now in the water. Yes. And you're swimming, you're swimming, and, you and know now what? you're dead. When I was a kid, we didn't have microbeads, and we did just fine. We, we don't apparently, need them. Apparently, right. Yeah. We're all, we all did just fine. It, we did this for thousands of years. We handled it without microbeads. Right. So <laughs> last Wednesday, Chile passed a bill that will prohibit the use of plastic bags in stores. This makes Chile the first country in the Americas to ban plastic bags. Right. So large retailers will have one year to phase out plastic bags. Smaller businesses will have two years. I think that that is 100% fair. So Chile was using 35 million plastic bags last year or 200 per person. And get this, the bags are only used on average for 12 minutes, and yet they last 400 years in a landfill. So the Air Force announced that it has awarded the Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle Launch uh, service contract to SpaceX. SpaceX was awarded $130 million to deliver the Air Force Space Command AFSCP-52 satellite into the intended orbit. The mission is planned to be launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida in late 2020. It's a classified mission. Yeah, Don't talk so about it. So we can't know what it is. So get this, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Antarctica is getting taller. So that means that the ice is getting thicker? Unfortunately, no. Oh. Uh, it's growing 1.6 inches or 41 millimeters per year. That's as the ice melts and the weight is removed from the bedrock, which then lifts up oh so the bedrock itself is floating on magma right and that means I, that for many years satellite data that we have showing the height of the ice may be wrong and it may be melting far faster than we thought before in fact it could be off by as much as 10 percent. oh great yeah all right it's time for our video contributor story of the week and this week we've got two Woo-hoo. we've got arlie from austin texas take it away Hello, Second Jesse. We are here in Austin, the beautiful capital of Texas, and we are visiting today C-Bikes, an electric vehicle company right here in the heart of Texas. Michael Bruner, CEO and co-founder. Taylor Brustwood, CEO and co-founder. Well, we're an electric vehicle company based here in Austin, Texas. We make a line of three different vehicles, electric bicycles, electric mopeds, and electric motorcycles. We've had the doors open since January. The one that really caught my eye was the Z3000, uh, which is a sports Sure, the Z3000 body style is definitely our most sport, most sporty looking model. Uh, the base model is actually our lowest performing motorcycle. It has a top speed of 45 miles an hour, has a range of 40 miles, and it's only $4,299. Now that same body style can be upgraded to a 6,000 watt system, which will then have 70 miles per hour and uh, 80 mile range. Right, and all those upgrades are very easy. They can be done at any time. It's just a matter of component swaps. So say if you had a a base model Z3000 and you had it for a year and then you wanted it to go highway speed, no problem. You come in, you get the upgrade, we swap it out for you, and you're on the highway. Tell me how long does it take to charge? Well, each vehicle is separate. The bicycles generally take about three and a half hours. The mopeds take about six and a half hours, and the motorcycles can take up to eight hours. So what kind of maintenance do these vehicles need? Well, all of our vehicles come standard with a warranty from us on the batteries and the motors. For the bicycles, you get a one-year warranty. On the mopeds and motorcycles, you get a three-year warranty on the batteries and the motors. So for our customers, the maintenance worries that they have to deal with are just tires and brakes. All right, thank you guys. Now you know. Those are pretty cool bikes. You got right in there to talk to the CEO. Nice. Nice job. And we've got our buddy Nick Pachunka, who's got his own YouTube channel. Check that out in the link below. And he's got, uh, well, he went to a little party this week. Here's your instruction manual. You're not a flamethrower. Don't open right. it until you get home. Yep, sounds good. Yeah. And then are they doing tours over here? Or? Yeah, you can wait at the exit for the tour of the SpaceX rocket and the Hyperloop test track. Okay, that will happen. Yeah. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good one. There we go. I can't wait for our pickup party. That's going to be fun. You get to roast your own marshmallow. I know. 
That's a pretty cool party. Now, that is the wrong way to roast marshmallows, and I have a thing or two to say about that. (laughs) All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. If you'd like to go see them, and we've got like seven of them this week, head over to Patreon. It's only a buck a month, so that's like, you're talking just pennies for these stories. Um, And it supports us so much in the show, so go do it. It's a Patreon bonus we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. That was wow. That was Woo-hoo. a lot of that was stories. A lot of stories. It's time a lot of for stuff. our Patreon shout outs. And these are people who give $5 or more a month to support us on this channel. They're pretty awesome people. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Stephen Bird. Y Squared. Ian Vishnevsky. David Gilberstadt. Peter Ilfrich. Kevin Sears. Sean Wirth. And Mike Smith. Thank you so much, everybody, for supporting us. That is so nice of you. All right, it is time for Elon's Tweets of the Week. There's so many here. Let's go. First one is, if you must know, I am a utopian anarchist of the kind best described by Ian Banks. Cool. I know that's deep. I know many people won't get it, but... Just I, that's is this, just. Is this the stuff that he and Grimes talk talk about? Probably. Okay. Yeah. The next one is my pay is in options, which only matter if stock goes up and I sell. We'll use that to make life multiplanetary, help education and environment on Earth with my foundation. Just don't want us to be sad about the future. I think that that is really a very telling tweet. Don't want us to be sad about the future. I think that that is Elon's goal, mm-hmm. is for us to be excited about the future. He knows that when people are excited about the future, amazing things happen. That's right. It's all about imagination. Right. And then lastly, it came out in some tweets that he was going to let owners of cars go to the factory and build their own cars. Right. Uh, so this came out. Model 3 Owners Club said, Elon torquing bolts on the line. Love how he gets his hands dirty. Any other car CEO doing this? Anyone? Bueller? Elon said, was thinking of offering an extended Tesla factory tour option where you could help build part of a car and understand how they come together. I know it would have been super fun for me when I was a kid or now. I think that this is, I mean, this is such an Elon idea of just like, hey, I know that I would have enjoyed this. Why don't other people do this? Now, the media jumped on this and was like, Tesla's having trouble with their production numbers, so the uh, Elon's solution is to have their customers build their own cars. And it's like... That's not what he meant. Where are you guys coming from? Right. So, I mean, this is... It's cool. It, it just it, This is a great idea. And I'm just... It's so I, annoying that we can't have a nice idea without people jumping down yeah. Elon's throat being like, you're just trying to do this. It's a lie. It's all scam. Blah, 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 blah. It's time for community mail time. Our friend Tomas from UK sent us this video of him getting his new Model X. And he says, I was following Elon and Tesla development since he publicly announced that he is going to produce the first gen Roadster. Now that I actually own his product, I feel that I am supporting his cause even more. This This is why I love you guys as well. I was watching your channel since first Tesla Time News episode. Wow. Then we got our friends Barb and Rick who just got their Tesla Model 3. They say that 80 cars a day for the past week have been delivered in Vancouver, Canada. He said, loving it, can't stop smiling, certainly makes cruising fun again. Check out this video. Hello from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and we are at the Tesla delivery event. Cars have been delivered starting last Sunday. Today is Saturday, June the 9th. And we are here to pick up our brand new Tesla Model 3. How awesome. And then we got our friend, Mr. G. Now this is why we do this. This is a video from our new friend, Mr. Grossinger, who teaches students at the Memorial High School in New Jersey how to weld and design and build and make electric cars. He is so cool. And we just sent him a Tesla wall charger that I ran over with the snowblower. Um, So they're gonna fix it and they're gonna install it on the school. We interviewed Mr. G, and you'll be seeing his interview soon. And by the way, this poster behind me, that is Mr. G's uh, little phrase that he uses in class, that failure is a chance to learn. And uh, hey, if you're interested in getting a poster like Mr. G's, just head over to posterenvy.com. All right, Stuart sent us a picture of his new Model 3 in Los Angeles. All these Model 3s being delivered. Yeah. It is so I'm seeing them all over the place, okay? It used to be that I only saw one in the driveway. Now I see them freaking everywhere. I'm just like, is that a Model 3? (laughs) That is a Model 3. Is that a Model 3? That is a Model 3. Now, Now, this is not a Model 3. No, this is a Mercedes, but why are our names on it? So this was sent to us from Joffrey from the UK. Um, He went to the fully charged live show. Oh, the, the Robert Llewellyn show. Yes, and this was sitting out in the parking lot. So, okay, 
one of you watching this knows something about knows this. something about this. So in the comment section down below, or actually no, reach out to us on Facebook if this is your car. First of all, I want to know how you got a Mercedes that's fully electric. Yeah, that it's, uh, the sign in the window says fully electric. Right, and then I also want to know what's up with the signs, and I, I'm sure like maybe you're already working on some kind of you know contributor story or something but we we definitely want to get in touch with you so yeah get in touch with us and speaking of blue cars Mm -hmm. adam in australia sent us this story about a 70 year old woman who traveled around the entire continent of australia in her blue tesla model s 75 called bluey check out these photos from her journey i mean this map right here blows my mind this is look at her route wow the entire continent that's amazing in an electric car i know that's i mean it Really cool photos on the Facebook page. You got to check them out. All right, it's time for our Patreon viewer comments. And our question this week was, when will the Chicago X open for riders? Now, you remember, Jesse, the Chicago X is going to be the loop that's going to go from Chicago O'Hare Airport down Mm -hmm. to the downtown. Um, Let's see. So our viewers mainly seem to think that it's going to happen by... 2021, 2021. July 2021. All right. Well, I'm going to go buy a ticket then. All right. It's time for our Supercharger video reviews. You remember, Jesse, that you can go out into the world and take videos of destination chargers, superchargers, put them on our website, and the whole world will be able to right. see them. Just remember to put them in landscape. Yep. Right? Because that's that's what we do our show and in. And we have so many cool ones. Here are some we got. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Supercharger. We're charging every Tesla off our property. You gotta be handy with a plug if you know what I mean. Hey yo, second Jesse. I'm here in Leon Perth. And there's a supercharger on my way to work. There's something going on that's gonna flip your ball. That truly going up from 8 to 20 stars. Yeah. Okay, man, sorry for that. Uh, now, seriously, hi, Zach and Jesse. Um, I'm here in Leonberg, Germany, um, and there was a supercharger before uh, with eight stalls. We have it here. And on the other side, they're building, or they were building, uh, some new. There are 10 new. Um, and over here, there are also um, two new supercharger. I think they are for, um, for cars with a trailer. You can you, you just uh, can leave the trailer on and uh, supercharge here. Um, that's very cool. And the progress was very, very fast. I was here uh, last week um, and there were, everything was uh, open. The stalls were standing, but uh, not ready. And uh, now you can use it. It's just one week uh, later. Um, so it's very cool and also we have um, some McDonald's over there a cinema uh, not far away and a grocery store uh, gas station is over there um, we have many possibilities uh, to do something here and now we've gone up from 8 to 20 stalls um, I find it very exciting um, and it's very cool I experienced uh, it was full here sometime, not, not very often, but it was. Um, and now there's 20, I think, uh, will not be full. Okay, bye bye. Hey Zach and Jesse, this is Monica and this is Strava, and we are here in Belleville, Ontario, in the brand new 20 stall supercharger uh, station. So, this is a pretty good location, I think we're going to give it maybe an 8 out of a 10. Uh, right behind me here, there is a mall and there is a food court in there with lots of options. Uh, if you are vegan or vegetarian, there is a booster juice in there and also across the street there is an Indian place that you can check out as well. There's also a Subway, a and w and a few other stores right across the street from here as well. There's a Chapters and a Starbucks if you were looking for coffee. And if you're feeling a little bit tired, there's a couple hotels on that side. So overall, pretty good location, lots of things to do and a good way to charge your car. Thanks! Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is from Pyhtä, Finland. A 10 stall supercharger station, the most eastern in Europe. And nearby there is a serious sports resort with some skyfall 
diving and very close by there's a ABC center with bars and restaurants and shopping and gasoline. And this is hello from sunny Finland. Isn't that impressive? It's really awesome. I can't believe that you guys keep doing this every week, um, but I can kind of believe it because there are new superchargers every week. Also, don't forget destination chargers. There are plenty right. of destination chargers. Holy moly, there are a lot of superchargers this All week. Right, here Let's we go. get started. Number 50 in Canada, the 16 stall in Burlington, Ontario. The 6 stall on Dongguan Shoe Center, China. The 8 stall in Sondrio, Italy. The 16 stall in Arna, Norway. The 12 stall in Gulsvik, Norway. The 16 stall in Kongolf, Sweden. Number 410 in Europe and 46 in Norway, the 12 stall in Vikesa, Norway. Number 214 in China is the 6 stall in Woohoo! Tiantai International Hotel, China. The 10 stall in Carmel, Indiana. The 18 stall in Springfield, Virginia. The 10 stall in Gaylord, Michigan. The 4 stall in Matawala, Mexico. Number 11 in Mexico, the 8 stall urban supercharger in Atizapan de Zaragoza, Mexico. The 12 stall in Henderson, Nevada. And 1,291 in the world and 535 in the USA, the 14 stall in Miami, Northeast 41st Street, Florida. Ooh, that's a lot. That is a lot. Um, don't forget that we have the Be Free page on our website. This is um, benefits for rewarding Elon employees. Mm -hmm. If you want to help out Elon employees, which means you're helping people that are helping the world. Um, we had a couple glitches with our code on the on the webpage last week, but we fixed them. So if you want to go there and upload your offers, keep in mind that what this is all about, right? Elon's companies are about making a better planet for all of us, cleaner, safer, more fun, exploring the universe. Let's help out his employees and see if we can attract the best people in the world. Right. So give them some really cool offers, right. okay? I, I challenge you people, a really awesome offer so that we have something to choose from next week, okay? Let's do it. Don't forget, if you want to help out this channel, you can come, become a Patreon, which is awesome. But Okay, but what if I don't want to spend any more money than I'm already spending? So I got a solution for you. You click on the Amazon affiliate link down below. It brings you to Amazon. You buy the stuff you would have bought anyway, and it gives us a little bit of money, and it doesn't cost you anything. Hmm. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Hey, also, don't forget about these cool shirts. You yes. can get them. There are lots of more cool shirts, but I mean, look at how cool this one is. I know, Stargazer. It's the Stargazer, and everyone else is just a normal, boring person. All right, thank you so much for watching the show. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Oh, and don't forget that we are going to drive to your house in the Tesla Roadster if you buy an S or an X and you use our referral code. And it's going to have the it's SpaceX have, option. It's going to have thrusters on it. Yeah. Yeah. We, if, you're, if your neighbors complain about noise... Like if, if they just are always complaining, we'll give them something to complain about. And our referral code gives you free <laughs> supercharging for life. And if you buy it in the next week, you're gonna get the free premium connectivity package. So for, hurry. So hurry up. Hurry what quickly. <laughs> go, go. All right, thank you so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.